Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the uh, secondary physical education course talk, um, which is part of Mardon Live. And um, today you are going to receive a presentation from Julie Stevens, who is the programme lead. And I'm Sally Richardson from the student recruitment team. And we also have one of our student ambassadors with us today, Kit, who will be able to share everything from a student perspective. Um, so the Q&A is open and it will remain open throughout the whole presentation. Um, so please do submit any questions that you have as we go through the presentation. And what we will do is we will answer those all at the end. Um, so I'm now going to hand you over to Julie. Thanks, Sally. Uh, welcome to the session, everyone. Um, I hope it's very clear and makes sense. And obviously post your questions if you need to know anything. Um, there's more information on the website, on the Marjon website about the programme, because this is about secondary teacher training for physical education. Um, and you can also have a look at the Get Into Teaching website and you'll realise that all applicants must be interviewed because we need to look at the suitability of each person who would like to be a teacher and our interviews take place each month. Um, as for me, I look after all secondary initial teacher training programmes at Marjon. So I look after the B.Ed, which is a three year programme, postgraduate certificate in education and school direct, which are one year programmes. And I've got Kit with me. Do you want to say hello, Kit? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm Kit. I'm a second year BA student. And Kit's here to answer the tricky questions that I can't answer because uh, obviously I, I teach, I look after the academic side and Kit will be able to tell you more about living at Marjon and working at Marjon. OK, so getting into teaching um, at the moment, there are a number of new courses opening across England for secondary PE. But we're a long established um, programme and our outcomes are excellent. And so the course you choose will depend on your qualifications, your experience and your location. But whichever course you choose, uh, your training will be similar and you should find out as much as you can so that you find the right university for you and the right programme for you. So all teacher training courses will offer qualified teacher status which is needed to teach as a qualified teacher in England. You can teach in some schools as an unqualified teacher, but you are likely to be paid less. You'll gain plenty of classroom experience in at least two schools. For PE, we take the classroom to mean the school field, the gymnasium, a pool, courts, sports hall, as well as the classroom. Uh, and you'll have a minimum of 24 weeks of school experience. Your training will help you meet the teacher's standards and that will include classroom management and making your subject accessible to your pupils. You will also receive expert academic and practical guidance from mentors and tutors who are there to help you succeed. Funding is there to help you during your teacher training and it's available through a range of sources for tuition fee and maintenance loans, for example. Um, but again, that wouldn't be my area, that's around admissions. So what does Marjon have to offer and why come here? Well, there have been um, a number of uh, things noticed nationally about Marjon recently in comparison tables, looking at the quality of the experience we provide at Marjon. But this is specific information, the National Student Survey, which takes place each year, and it's information about the B.Ed in physical education here at Marjon. It's key information that you'll be interested in about the B.Ed programme and we're very, very proud of these statistics and we work hard with our trainees to ensure that they leave here as the best newly qualified teachers they can be. Last year, 100% of our trainees rated the course as good or better and all measures were above sector compared to other institutions. This statement from Ofsted talks about a key strength of the partnership being how well prepared our, our trainees are to make, him, make them employable and they stay in teaching posts. And our employment data shows that all trainees who qualified and wanted to get jobs as teachers are employed as teachers now. And we're confident that the quality of our training means that they want to stay in teaching because they have the strength and depth of experience they need to succeed. This year interviews have been, slight, uh, been slightly different with many taking place online. These, that, that's interviews for school jobs, I mean, 
Uh, but our trainees have adapted and prepared well and are getting jobs all the way from London to Cornwall in a wide range of schools. And they're already involved with the schools before they start in September, which is great preparation. Just for your information, to clarify that I'm Julie and I'm the programme leader. Um, we are our teachers, our initial teacher training specialists, so Claire Bulford and Hannah Wood. And our module leaders are Aaron, Erica, as well as Claire, Hannah and myself. And Aaron and Erica are specialists in their field. Um, the picture of it is of us at graduation a couple of years ago. So they are the academics. Um, this picture is of some of our trainees and they're all employed in graduate level jobs. In terms of their achievement, generally speaking, about 25% achieve first class honours degrees. 66% achieved two ones and around 9% two twos. In terms of Ofsted grading, around 50% are good and 50% outstanding. And it's a continuing trend, plus the 100% student satisfaction from the NSF. Now, in terms of the programme itself, it's an intense three year degree with qualified teacher status. It is the quickest route into teaching. But it also means that we require full attendance and we demand a lot from you, but we provide a lot of support as well. So it's a three year degree plus qualified teacher status. These are our current first years, um, and this is part of our induction program at Big Breeze Surfing. And if you apply for this program, it's because you want to be a teacher. You've probably always wanted to be a PE teacher, and this would be the only route for you. Now, in terms of Big Bree and surfing, we may not be able to do that first thing this year, but we will certainly plan it into our program. Uh, the DfE decide on the number of places on the programme and this year it's 24 and competition is tough. So you may want to think carefully, do I want to be a teacher definitely or might a BA route be better for me? And you could do a BA in PE or a BA in coaching or, or BSc in sports science and then a PGCE. So there are different options open to you. Um, and you might want to ask Kit about that later, whether she definitely wanted to be a teacher or, or how she thought about uh, what she was applying for. So the requirements for the B.Ed, if we have 24 places, typically 112 points or BBC or DMM at BTEC. Um, you must have GCSE grade four or grade C for English and maths. And that's really important because you're a teacher first and a teacher of the subject second. We used to have professional skills tests for English and maths, but they have now been removed. But functional English and maths remains focus, and that's because they are the two subjects that have the most impact on young people becoming successful adults. And so we must all be good at literacy and numeracy. Um, in terms of getting into school for experience, that's important as well. I know we've all been to school, but being on the other side of the fence from the teaching side is really important in you understanding your role and responsibilities. So it's great to get that. And as I mentioned, all applicants will be interviewed. There are three parts to the BEd. Um, the general professional studies, which helps you understand more about where education sits um, in the national priorities, uh, what other things are national priorities, for example, behaviour is, um, teaching children who don't have English as a first language, special educational needs. So that's part of general professional studies. The subject knowledge and pedagogy development looks at practical areas of activity and how you teach them. And the third part is the school placements. This might help you to give an, uh, uh, and get an understanding of the um, content of the year. So if you look at uh, where you start, so you would start on the 21st of September and your induction will be that first week. Then you will have a number of weeks teaching and learning with us, half term of reading week, uh, then Christmas and then the placements are in dark blue. So you have three week placement there, school based training and then you will have 
two more weeks at the end of the year. And you can see that through the second year, you've got two blocks plus the third one there. And then in the third year, you've got this block here, which is nine weeks before Christmas. And then the grey block is your longer block of school based training. During that time, you still have your academic studies going on. So the first year, um, Kit, would you like to talk about any of these modules here and what you were doing in them? Uh, yeah, of course. So um, for SEN uh, CO1, um, we looked at writing an essay and actually looking at our teaching pedagogy. Um, so how we explored like different teaching styles. Um, so that was a really good module to introduce us to the course really. Um, for non-invasion games, uh, we looked at um, badminton, tennis, uh, rounders, um, and I've forgotten the last one, I think it was cricket. Um, and that was, again, as you can see, quite practical based, but we also looked at an essay. So we delivered um, a small segment of like a 15 minute lesson and then uh, analysed it and looked at how we could improve it. So again, that's working on how we're teaching and delivering our sessions. Um, for the um, pedagogy aspect of physical education, we looked at like the biomechanics between movements um, and that was with Aaron. So that was a really um, interesting module to look at. And then for outdoor adventurous activities, that was a really fun module that everyone got involved in and got the team closer together. And that was again looking at outdoors. So we went um, co-steering, which was really fun. We did like a residential trip and we learned about how we deliver outdoor ed. Um, really fun module as well. So it is a really fun first year. Thank you. Thank you, Kit. So you can talk if you talk about the second year as well, and then I'll talk about the third year because you haven't done it yet, obviously. <laughs> um, so for DO1's curriculum and pedagogy, that is looking again at how we develop as a teacher, but looking more in depth at assessment and how we'd place that in our placements within schools. Um, and that also links into the assessment and pupil progress, which is a teaching standard. So that again develops you as a teacher um, and we can put that into practice again on placement. Um, for social sciences, um, we looked at how um, we would teach A level, um, specifically key stage five, which again will help us for our third year placement. And we looked at different like BTEC, GCSE, um, so we could look at a variation of um, examinations. Uh, for invasion games, um, forgotten what we did there. Um, Rugby, basketball, football, yeah. hockey. Sorry, yeah, we had external <laughs> lecturers coming in, teaching us. That was a really fun module again. And for aesthetics, which we unfortunately couldn't do in practice, but we've learned online this year. Um, and that was looking at analysing movements and teaching gymnastics and dance. So hopefully we'll get some experience in that when we go back for third year. But that was delivered amazingly online uh, for the circumstances. And we did uh, like a portfolio and a sequence of learning over six weeks. Um, again, we can place that in placements when we want to use it. Thank you. Brilliant, thank you. And the assessment module links with Invasion Games so that you designed an assessment tool to use practically in school. So that was a real hands on experience. Thank you, Kit. So what you'll be doing next year, Kit, is this one, because this whole uh, programme was revalidated in 2018. So this is being taught for the first time. It's not hugely different, um, but it just means that we can take um, new developments in education into account. So in the third year, SCNH01, that is the placement module and it runs throughout the year uh, and you have those two large placements in there. And this is the qualified teacher status uh, module where you pass or fail. Now, clearly we would know if you were not if you were struggling and we would put in additional support. Uh, and your evidence for the teacher standards is in an indicative evidence folder. And that's at exactly the point we're at now with our third years. So our third years are now planning to present that evidence to us in a week or so's time. Uh, HO2 looks at current issues in education. So what's happening now? Um, obviously, we will look at online delivery next year as well and how that can work. We look at all the national priorities currently, any changes to examinations, things like that. HO3 looks at diversity because not all children like running around a hockey pitch or rugby pitch. 
and, and we need to find something that children love doing to make sure they're healthy adults. Um, and HO4 is the research project and that's again a 40 credit module so it's double weighted um, and to be a graduate you should undertake research to help you improve your own practice. Um, it's highly relevant to what you're doing in school so we match up your what you need to do in school with a research project um, and that's just about well that's about to be marked actually. So that's the third year. So the weekly timetable um, will look something like this. I know the module codes aren't exactly right, but Kit, do you want to talk about what your week looks like generally? Um, yeah, so normally we're in lectures uh, Monday to Friday with a Wednesday off. Um, some terms vary on how many modules you will have, but they're usually quite busy, but engaging lectures throughout. We have a Wednesday off and that's like a sports day. So you have your box Wednesdays, you perform, um, have matches against other universities so that's a really good like day off and also you can do a bit of revision as well on that day if you wanted to um but yeah we we normally don't have lectures nine to five but if we do we've always got a day where we can do some extra reading afterwards um just to develop our knowledge yeah and reading is a really important part of reading for a degree it's called reading for a degree so although you have um, hours worth of lectures, you're expected to do at least a couple of hours of reading linked to those lectures. Um, and you will find that this timetable is busier than many other programmes if, if it's a BA or a BSc. And that's again because it's a professional programme, because it's a degree plus qualified teacher status. So uh, what happens is our, our groups tend to be very close knit because they are um, much busier than some other programmes. Um, this is an example of linking theory with practice. So we quite often bring schools into the university to work with our trainees. So here we've got Super Learning Day where our trainees are working with pupils in year 10 and 11 um, to look at linking theory of practice in terms of GCSE and BTEC content. We have a Gifted and Talented Day and we also look at assessment um, with pupils. In terms of the kind of academic assess assessment you will be engaged in, um, there's a really wide range and that's because we know that not everybody enjoys um, exams and we look at your different skills through different routes and all of these things are assessment methods that we use across the year. Um, as you'll see there is not an emphasis on exams, so there, there are a couple. Um, Kit, do you want to talk about your preferred types of assessment? Um, so my preferred type of assessment would probably be writing an essay um, as I can do my extra reading, find out some more research and actually apply it to an essay. Whereas an exam, I get a bit stressed out and um, don't really know what to write. So it's good for an essay as, as you can develop your knowledge a lot. I also enjoyed uh, the um, e-portfolio we did and that's in um, that's in second year looking at inva uh, invasion games. That was another really good uh, way of assessing us as we could look at different forms of assessment and actually apply our warm ups, main sessions and actually look at a variation of how we teach a week, our weaker sport. So that was also really good to broaden our knowledge on a sport we're not too comfortable in. So that was really good. Brilliant. Well done. OK, in terms of placements, I'm sure that's a question you've all got on your minds. Um, the placements are um, throughout the years, throughout the three years, because it's important that you uh, accumulate experience and build on experience each year. So you have three weeks in a secondary school um, in the first year, and that's looking at just the other side of you know, being in school, so being a teacher and you will start to teach some episodes. You may actually teach some whole lessons. You will arrange your own placement for two weeks in June at the end of the programme, because when you come back in year two, you go almost immediately into your four week placement, which looks at primary secondary transition. That's straight away in September. You have four weeks in the special educational needs school in February. Uh, and what's interesting about that is um, the DfE have just changed the guidelines that you can actually do a longer placement in year three in a special educational needs school. So that's a really good option for many of our trainees. Um, in the third year, 
you have two long placements and one is from October to December and placement B is 16 weeks February to June. Um, in year one and two, they tend to, your placements tend to be local. Oh, yeah, and uh, in year three, you can be anywhere from London to Camborne. But the reason there's a picture of a holiday there is to say check dates before booking any of your holidays, because I know sometimes people are keen to get organised, but if it overlaps with um, a placement, we then need to extend the placement somehow. So keep that in mind. So the placements, um, we're, we're renowned nationally for producing excellent teachers and we're very proud of that. And we've got strong links with many schools all the way from London, right the way down to Cornwall and beyond. We've actually got one in Peterborough this year as well. Uh, and our graduates consistently find employment immediately or straight after um, the programme. And quite often we find that the placement schools are very keen to keep our trainees. Um, not always possible, but London graduates often find a job in the school they were in. Um, but our graduates are promotion ready and we've got many of our recent trainees, recently qualified teachers who are already being promoted, which is fantastic and that they're taking up the opportunities. Um, I also need to mention that um, there is some financial support. I know for PGCEs there are lots of bursaries around, but there's nothing for PE and there's certainly nothing for B.Eds at the moment. So we do try and help you a little bit with travel or accommodation if you are placed further away. So what to do now? You need to consider your options and which right is best for you. Are you definite? You want to be a teacher um, and you've always wanted to be a teacher and this is exactly the right route for you because it's the quickest way to become a PE teacher in secondary school. If you're not too sure and you think the programme might be a little bit intense um, and you don't want me on your back all the time, you might go for a BA, BSc route with a PGCE, which is one year. Uh, or you might try the school direct route, which is um, a school based route into teaching. And again, you get a PGCE that way. Uh, check you've got all the relevant qualifications and continue to work hard for the UCAS points. You know, you're going to be working hard at university, so get yourself into the, the groove of working very hard, you know, and being proud of the work you do. Get as much experience in school as you possibly can, because it's going to help you uh, and it won't all be brand new to you and you will see different situations evolving and you'll understand more about behaviour management, for example. Uh, look carefully at your literacy and numeracy. Um, do you need to do anything in addition to help you when you start at university? And the, the final thing is to have a look at your subject knowledge because PE uh, is more than just one area. It's six areas of activity. So there's games, gym, gymnastics, dance, outdoor ed, swimming and athletics. And you, I'm willing to bet you're not good at all of them. So you need to look at the areas where you are weakest and do something about them before you actually start. So if you know that dance isn't a strength, perhaps you can start to do some research about how you teach dance effectively, different types of dance, look at the GCSE dance and things like that. Um, Kit, what would you say your strengths and which are the areas you've needed to work on? Um, so my strengths were athletics, swimming um, and a bit of rugby, um, which I started at university rugby. Um, and my weaker ones were like football, um, badminton, any racket sports, really. Um, so before I came to uni, I did a bit of practice just in my local park, doing a bit of tennis and also looking up at the rules. So I had a bit of ba like base knowledge to go to uni with. And then um, the lecturers helped me develop my knowledge and my skills um, throughout the course. So yeah, I've really developed my weaker sports. <laughs> mm. And that's really important because the, the quality of your subject knowledge will help you help pupils in uh, progress, because if you don't give the correct feedback at the right time, they're just going to stay where they are. And the quality of your feedback is what makes a massive difference to pupils learning. OK, so in terms of interviews, if you um, apply to us and you're offered an interview, it takes a day. So you'd come for the day um, and you would do some preparation, reading about the national curriculum. You would make sure you get some school experience. You'd let us know about what kind of volunteering you've been doing. 
you will do an English and maths assessment, not because that's pass fail, but because it will tell us if we need to give you any more support. There is a little teaching activity for only 10 minutes with a partner. You would do that and then you would have a group interview where we talk about the national curriculum and your experiences of teaching. So you need to apply through UCAS um, and as I've said, competition can be strong. So think about how to use your choices. You know, do you want to add in a BA or a BSc as well? Think carefully about that and you don't have to use all of your choices, but you do have to make them at the same time. And if you're not offered a place, you can apply through clearing. So I know we've probably got different people in different positions listening at the moment. Um, so, you know, some of you may be thinking of applying through clearing. I think we've probably got maybe one or two places left at the moment for September. Applying for next year, UCAS will be open soon or you can apply through clearing for this year. Um, if, and that's if you've been unsuccessful this year or, you, or you've withdrawn or you've declined your offers. So this is Bigbury, this is surfing, this is part of induction and it's great fun. And we'd be really happy for you to come and join us in September or the following September or whichever September you choose and we'd really like you um, to enjoy being part of this course. There's lots of places to go for help. So you can find out from UCAS or from the DFE from Get Into Teaching. Um, it's a DFE free phone. You can ask um, at Marjon or you can contact me if you have any additional questions or admissions. They will answer things around um, accommodation and the qualifications, etc. And there are a number of other talks that you may be interested in or you may have already done. So Sally, that's all I'm going to say about the programme for the minute. Would you like to come back and talk to us? Of course I would. Thank you, Julie. That was really interesting to hear about um, all the different modules and Kit, thank you for sharing um, your favourite things so far and um, in regards to your strengths and weaknesses. I think that's um, it's really cool to hear that from a student um, on what they had to do before starting university. So thank you, Julie, for asking Kit that. Um, it was really, really good to hear. Um, Julie, we have had a question come through, which I'm going to ask you if that's OK. Mm -hmm. um, so it's how do you gain an enhancement qualification on the B.Ed course? OK, <laughs> so an enhancement would be on your certificate. So when you qualify, it will say that you're a, a qualified teacher of secondary education uh, with a specialism in PE. Now, you can, can gain an enhancement, which means it's um, another string to your bow so that when you go on interview and you have a head teacher and a panel of governors, they say, is there anything else you could offer the school? And you can say, yes, I, am, I have done um, six weeks of this particular thing. So you could do it, look at a second subject in your third year. So the, the shortage areas, in fact, most subjects are shortage areas apart from PE, but maths is one, maths, science, um, modern foreign languages, they are all subjects where if you have that as an enhancement, it will supplement what you can offer a school. And what we ask trainees to do is in their final placement and in their third year, they we would ask them to go and observe an in, a second subject or a key stage that they're interested in and actually teach six hours worth of that subject. So you might, if it's maths, for example, you might start by observing maths, key stage three maths in your school, and then you would start to teach them episodes and then you would start to take over the class for six hours of learning. That can be a second subject. It might be a different phase, so it might be primary or it might be key stage five or you might be interested in special needs. So you can gain an enhancement in any of those areas. Thank you, Julie. I think that's a really clear answer to that question. Um, so I have another question here from you, which is in regards to tutors. So um, if you come to study at Marjon, will you be assigned a specific tutor? Yes, you do. Uh, you have a personal development tutor um, and it's, it will be either me, Claire or Hannah. Um, we will meet regularly and um, sometimes we meet as a group and sometimes we meet individually. In fact, Kit, would you like to talk about the PDT programme, the personal development tutor? and what type of things you do with, with us? Yeah, of course. Um, 
So we have them normally every term uh, as a group, so groups, quite small groups of seven, six or seven. Uh, we look at um, how our knowledge is improved. So we grade ourselves and then write in a box how we've developed. Um, and then we also talk about what we would like to improve academically and with our writing and reading in another box. Um, and that's all filled in and then we email it to our PDT, so personal development tutors, um, they look over it um, and then we can have a discussion. We can also email them or literally pop into their office on campus if we're struggling with anything and need any help. Uh, they're always the first person to go to and they're actually really helpful and have supported me a lot through my two years at Marjon so far. So yeah, it's a really good uh, session to discuss what we're struggling with and they can guide us and support us in any way that we need really. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. I think that's really interesting. I think that's one thing I've noticed since I've been working at Marjon is actually there's no area that's closed off to the students. So you don't have to like ring a doorbell to get or kind of ask at reception desk to get through to the academic side of things. You know where their office is, you can knock on their door. And most of them have like a little whiteboard on their door. So you know actually if they're away or if they're in a meeting and things like that. So um I completely agree with what you're saying there, Kit. They're they're always available and even virtually I know kind of they're always available to contact on Microsoft Teams or via email. Um, and it's just phenomenal the support that you guys do get. Um, I think Kit, I'm gonna ask you um another question here. It's just in regards to placements. Um so how have your placements been so far? Have you been enjoying them and what have you done? Perfect. Um so I've loved all my placements. They've really developed me as a teacher and I've seen teaching styles that I'd like to implement on my longer placement and eventually as when I qualify as a teacher. Um, so for first year, I was quite nervous for my first placement just because it's it's a bit daunting. But when you go in on the first day, honestly, I'd say just chuck yourself into it. Try and observe as much as you can and teach little segments when you're feeling comfortable. But really, it's just an experience to start viewing and looking at what a, a school environment is like. Um, and then the two weeks that you um, plan yourself, I did it in my uh, old school. That was really fun as well because I've had the experience in a three week and then I could go in and teach uh, in the summer, which is really good. Um, then for my second year placement, um, I was back in Plymouth. Um, that was looking at the transitioning um, of primary to secondary. I did like questionnaires for year sevens and year sixes. Um, I'm writing an essay on it. So that was good to look at the why it changes and where you can progress their like basic skills in year seven and then develop it further on. And then my uh, other month placement on the SEND school was amazing. Um, that really looked at how you can support students with um, special educational needs. And I love that. So they've all been really good. And as I said, like if you have any uh, issues, you have a mentor in schools and you've got your PDT tutor as well, which are always on hand with an email or even a call. Mm -hmm. Thanks. That's really great to hear. I especially liked what you said about um, kind of the teaching styles and seeing other people's teaching styles um, in that real life environment and kind of knowing how you might want to adapt your approach. Um, yeah. Which again links in with your personal development and kind of shaping who you are going to be as a teacher. Um, yeah. So thank you. That was really interesting to hear. Um, I suppose this is probably one for both um, you and Julie again. Um, it's just in regards to extracurricular, I suppose, at Marjon and what kind of sports clubs are available. I know you said um, um, earlier on that you've started playing rugby since being at uni. Um, did you want to kind of elaborate on some of the sports opportunities that we have? Yeah, of course. Um, there's honestly loads of sports. There's lacrosse, football, netball. It's a really good like sporting community. Um, and if you, you can also set up a sport if you have, um, you can go to the student uh, hub and actually talk to the president and maybe set up a sport if there's not one there but um the the wednesday bucks games is such a good day to be with your friends uh watch sports also developing sports you can look at a week of sport go watch it actually see it and play as well which is really important um but yeah there's loads of opportunities and there's training throughout the week for the different sports and the facilities are amazing as well so it's the best place to be should I add something there? Yeah, if you'd like to. Yeah, because um, it's it's not just a B.Ed. programme for physical education. There are lots of other programmes, so coaching, sports science, um, B.A. In, in physical education. So there are a lot of other um, sporty um, 
and active people. So there's a real combination. It's a really lovely way of socialising. So because the B Ed tends to be quite a small course, it means that you can meet everybody else as well. And we all know that great uh, sport is a great way of socialising. So it's um, a lovely situation to be in. Yeah, I, I agree with that. From my office when we're on campus, I can see the lacrosse and hockey pitches. So um, sometimes it's quite nice to kind of on my lunch break, kind of look out and, and watch mm -hmm. the sport from afar and seeing how many people are actually there supporting. Um, so even for those courses that aren't sport based, um, there's such a huge social atmosphere around the Bucks on Wednesday and Varsity um, to even go watch and support your um, your fellow um, colleagues and students, which is also really, really great to see. And on Wednesdays when our, the interview days tend to be, um, mm -hmm. when we're setting up reception, We've got everyone waiting for their coaches to take them off to other universities, take them to their books games, um, which is also amazing seeing how excited they are all to like go and play a game. Um, so we haven't had any further Q&A's and questions coming in. Um, so I'm going to do like a bit of a roundup now. So I just want to say thank you, Julie, for providing that presentation and an overview you. of the course. Um, it was really, really interesting to see all these different aspects and the skills and knowledge um, that our students kind of obtain on the course. Kit, thank you um, for sharing your first and second year experiences. Um, it's been great to hear that as well. And your placements um, and best of luck for your third year um, and thank you to all of our attendees that have joined us today and for the questions they've put in um, so yeah I'm going to say goodbye now thanks everyone thank you thank you